In this video, I will be going over things I wish I knew before playing Deep Rock Galactic. This video will be mostly for beginners, and in the video I will be going over things like promotions, the four classes, assignments, and perks. And with all that being said, let's get straight into it. First off, consider playing the tutorial. I made the mistake of skipping it to play with friends right away, but trust me it's worth your time. During the tutorial, they will face you at several dirt mounds and tell you to use a terrain scanner. For many new players, they will sometimes forget about the terrain scanner and this will cause you to get confused on where to go. That's why it's one of the most important things to learn how to use early on. Its ability to show you some of the caves ahead of you is essential to progressing missions. It's also very helpful for showing you areas of the cave that you haven't even explored yet. So whenever you get confused by a cave layout, whip that little sucker out and zoom out as far as possible, and that should probably help. Let's talk about some minerals. Mine everything that you can in missions. When I first started playing, I would always run past minerals to complete missions faster, or I didn't think it was worth it. And now looking back, it would have definitely helped to have some of those extra minerals. Uh, but I also don't blame people who do the same, who doesn't want to get straight to the shooting. That, that's kind of just like the reason why I play DRG sometimes, so, you know, I don't blame them. But, as a matter of fact, one of the only ways to buy upgrades and weapons in DRG is by collecting minerals, so why not maximize your missions by mining everything possible? You also get more XP per mineral mine, so there's another incentive to do so. One of the most important minerals in the game, Nitra, will become one of your best friends. Once you deposit 80 Nitra, you will gain the ability to call resupplies that give you half of your ammo back. Another little tip is if you hold your laser pointer out and look under your name, there should be 4 bars showing your ammo capacity. 4 bars meaning you have full ammo, so you usually just want to take a resupply when you hit just under 2 bars. Also, don't rely on resupplies for health, unless you're playing solo. You'd rather just want to look for some red sugar. If you make the decision to join other players, try avoiding taking two resupplies, also known as double dipping, as this will most likely get you kicked from a game unless you're given permission from the host. I don't know if this is really a tip or just common sense, but when I first started playing I never really knew that the regular grunts and the other variants all have weak points on their head, meaning if shot in the head it does more damage. And it may seem obvious, but it's just something that I didn't really notice uh, when I first played. And the way I found out was actually looking through the miner's manual that I highly suggest checking out. I mean that. That thing shows you every bug's individual weakness and is pretty pretty useful. Let's talk about some things I wish I knew about the space rig before playing. The very first thing you should look at is the assignment terminal. If you're just starting out, you may overlook it, but this is actually where you start quests and is also very important for progression in DRG. Uh, fun fact, I played DRG for two weeks straight without even knowing about the assignment terminal. Yeah. If you want to start up assignment mission, look for any missions with the diamond icon next to it. Also be sure the hazard level is only on 1 or 2, but if you're feeling spicy and want a challenge, try 3. While hazard 4 is very tempting to try, it might not be the best experience when first starting out. But shit, if you want to try it, go for it. For the equipment terminal and all the upgrades that come with it, just try to save as many minerals and credits as you can so you can start experimenting. Once you hit level 4 with any class, definitely get the power attack for that pickaxe. This will be useful when you start playing. It's essentially a melee attack that can be used to kill bugs or you can also use it to mine terrain quicker. After every use, you will have to wait 20 to 30 seconds depending on the upgrades you have to use it again. Next to your weapons is where your perks are. These will help a lot when you're playing. 
To get new perks, you have to complete mission challenges that can be claimed for perk points, allowing you to get new perks. Don't worry too much on the challenges, you'll just complete them by playing normally. Red perks are passive abilities and you can equip more of them if you buy the upgrade. The blue perks, active perks, are the more physical and noticeable powers that the player can use. In the equipment terminal, you can eventually equip two blue perks by promoting a dwarf. Perks that I recommend getting first are thorns and heightened senses. Next, let's talk a little bit about things I wish I knew about each class in DRG. First off, try experimenting with all four classes before you decide to main only one or two of them. For me personally, I neglected the hell out of Gunner my first month playing, but once I started actually trying him out, he actually became one of my favorites. I'm going to go over every class and give a brief description of what each piece of equipment does and some tips. Let's start with Driller. Driller is the most skill gapped class in my opinion because of his ability to manipulate the terrain around him by using his drills. If you ever find yourself in a pickle, you can try drilling a singular tunnel that can act as a safety bunker, and it will funnel the bugs in for you so they're easier to kill. It can give you and your team an advantage if used correctly, or a disadvantage if used carelessly. He also has a C4 that does massive damage and can also manipulate the train if you have the upgrade on your satchel charges. Wow. But be careful and watch out for friendly dwarves. Scout has a grappling gun that allows him to get high up minerals for the team. One of the best ways to get minerals without the need of an NG's platforms is by simply using that pickaxe power attack I talked about earlier. He also has a flare gun that lights up caves for you and your team which can be super useful when trying to find nitra and other valuables. For the engineer, he has a platform gun that can assist scout when getting higher up minerals. Just make sure to place a platform for every chunk of mineral you see high up, so the scout can keep mining rather than waiting on you for each individual platform. You can also use his platforms to block up points of a cave or even to assist the team with platform stairs or bridges. Try to take advantage of the platform upgrade that reduces fall damage. This can be very useful when trying to escape bad situations. All I can say for the turrets is to try to set them up as often as possible. You can also try to take advantage of the Warthog turret whip upgrade that allows you to shoot your turrets causing them to shoot a powerful blast at enemies. Now for Gunner, he's a pretty simple character. All you really have to do is throw down a shield once in a while whenever your team is in danger, or if you want to revive a downed ally covered in bugs. I would suggest upgrading a shield size. This makes them more useful in bigger areas and can help your team get some space. For his zipline equipment, try to shoot at least one or two ziplines per cave going uphill or downhill so you and your team can have some easy transportation going back and forth. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about some tips for when you actually are playing. If you decide to join others through the server listings, just know to never make the big mission decisions without the host, like pressing the button for the drop pod way too early. This can be very frustrating for other players even if you didn't know, and will most likely result in you getting kicked. To avoid this, just respect their playing pace and let them make the decisions. During a mission, if you come across any machine events, just ignore them for now, unless you are playing with someone who knows how to do it. And if you are already promoted, give one of these suckers a try. These will be super useful down the road when you promote a class. If you find a cargo crate, you must find two big batteries that are scattered around. They will also make noises that can be heard in the distance and once you find them you can plug both of them in and begin building it. Cargo crates contain minerals and a weapon cosmetic. If you find a random helmet making noise on the ground, 
you can begin to scan it. Once you do that, a purple icon will be placed on your terrain scanner. If you head to the icon, you will most likely need to dig to it, but once you reach it, you will be rewarded with minerals and a cosmetic pickaxe part. Next, let's talk a little bit about promotions. Promotions are basically like a prestige system similar to what's in the older Call of Duty games. Your level will reset and your character will have a banner above its picture. But unlike in COD, you will keep all of your weapons and upgrades. When you promote a class, you gain a matrix key that allows you to start machine events and you'll be able to unlock more items like matrix cores and the ability to play deep dives. And now you may be asking yourself, well how do I promote? Uh, well, to promote any of the four classes, you have to hit level 25. Then you'll gain access to a promotion assignment, but I recommend changing characters once you hit level 25 and begin that assignment. Because you'll just be wasting XP on an already max character. And once you complete the promotion assignment and are back on the space rig, you can head to the Memorial Hall to promote your character. I wanted to make this video because I've been seeing a huge surge in new players and wanted to precisely explain some things I wish I knew. I might have explained a little too much, but you know, I, I remember my first time playing DRG and being so confused by how in depth the game is. So I mean, hopefully this made it a little easier for some of you. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll try to respond as fast as possible. Make sure to like the video if you thought it was helpful in any way, shape, or form, or consider subscribing for more DRG related content. Thanks for watching. Out of ammo! Oh, I'll tear your blind sight in me! Stop shooting me!